Time to travel to distant lands while finding love. Here are 10 adventure romance anime you must watch. Seriously, why do you even exist if you haven't watched these anime? <laughs> Just kidding. Let's get started. Number 10, My Cultivator Girlfriend. Does this mean the main character's girlfriend helps him at a farm? Nope, genius, because this anime belongs to the cultivation niche. It's a niche in Chinese anime where the main character needs to constantly level up using techniques like power scaling or meditation. In other words, this is pretty much Chinese for the word power fantasy. Here we move on to a modern cultivation world where a rule known as the law of the jungle makes everyone's lives insecure. After saving a cultivator girl, the security guard Ma Ying Zhong accidentally starts the journey of practicing cultivation. So this pretty much has every cultivation trope imaginable, but what's important is love. So if you want a girlfriend, stop going to the gym and start cultivating. Number 9, Children Who Chase Lost Voices. <laughs> This isn't about some children who chase mysterious voices. This is a movie from our good old Mr. Makoto. If you want to see how anime movies are done right, make sure to give this one a go. Just like his other movies, this one involves tons of supernatural elements plus a nice romance. Here we have songs who can summon monsters. No, you heard that right. Here, we have this girl called Asuna who one day turns her old crystal radio to listen to a different kind of music. While she's listening to it, a dangerous creature attacks her and our damsel in distress is saved by a boy named Shun. This guy drags her through a long journey on a long lost land filled with magic and beasts. That premise alone tells you how much adventure and romance this title has, so don't miss out on this one. Number 8, Metropolis. <laughs> Are we gonna see Superman here? Nope, you don't get to see any Batman with kryptonite either, but you get to see a world where humans and robots live together. In this city of Metropolis is a criminal called Dr. Lafton. And no, this guy didn't get that name because he likes to laugh. Chasing him is the detective Ban and his nephew, Kenichi. After they find his lab, Kenichi finds a girl without any memory of her past life and decides to protect her. And the only bad thing about this movie is the animation. Since this is an old movie, you cannot compare it with any modern animated movies, but everything else from the action to the adventure to the cyberpunk to the steampunk to the romance is all really done well. Make sure to give this one a go. Number 7, Life with an Ordinary Guy Who Reincarnated Into a Total Fantasy Knockout. What happens when your bro turns into an anime girl? <laughs> then you got bro issues. And this whole anime is about bros having bro issues. Here we have a bro who doesn't have any luck with women and another bro who is popular with women. Then a goddess sends these two to an isekai world and turns the bro who isn't popular with women to a woman. How does our duo survive the sudden Japanese plot twist? What's that? Despite the premise being completely original and weird at the same time, the anime knows how to parody every popular isekai trope well. Watch this the same way you watch Konosuba, and don't go expecting some FMBA level of writing in here. There is also a ton of comedy in here apart from the adventure and romance, so watch how bros handle bro issues while laughing. Number 6, The Fruits of Evolution. Yeah. <laughs>
Guy eats fruit. Guy becomes overpowered. Guy gets girls. Guy lives happily ever after. Well, what do you know? I just summed up that one pretty quickly. But rather than the premise, what you should appreciate here is the stuff you find in between. Did you know that the first episode of this anime has a talking pink gorilla? <laughs> That's like the next biggest crossover after Godzilla vs. King Kong. <laughs> Jokes aside, the anime feels pretty generic, but the romance and isekai elements are played really well, so you're forced to watch it. Just like in Arifutera anime, a whole class gets transported into a magical fantasy world, and this poor guy lands in a completely different area. There he eats the ultimate fruit of evolution and evolves into a whole new character. And then he follows the ultimate advice of Uncle Ben. With great power comes a great amount of girls. Number five, Tsubasa Chronicle. What if the girl you knew since you were a kid suddenly sprouted out butterfly wings? You'd say, what? Or would you just watch her fly away? Tsubasa Reservoir Chronicle follows a boy named Sayoran who finds her childhood friend, Princess Sakura, making an appearance in an excavation site with mysterious wings on her back. When the wings disperse into many feathers and disappear, she figures out that she lost her memory because of it, and now it's up to him to restore her memory. <laughs> What do you get here? Let's see. We've got some good characters, a nice adventure, supernatural elements with a twist, and Yuki Kajura's soundtrack. Who cares about the rest of the stuff when Yuki Kajura is the one doing the soundtrack? You should watch this anime for the soundtrack alone. Number four, Familiar of Zero. <laughs> Familiar of Zero starts when a girl in his fantasy world named Luis summons a familiar from our world named Saito Hiraga. Saito was just an average high schooler who needed to live a normal life, but that soon became a dream as he now needed to serve Luis and even save her from embarrassing moments. Yeah, you heard that right. This is one of those master servant romance anime. Uh, the plot and the characters here may be nothing original, but man, this show forces you to watch it till the end. Perhaps it's the way the whole plot's executed, or this emotional love moment's hidden between the scenes, or how the queen becomes the best girl sometime later. But in the end, Familiar of Zero is a great anime that has some great romance. So watch it! Number three, Nor Nine. Anata. Here we have one spaceship carrying its passengers to the other end of the world, while one of them realizes there is one extra among them, who is the person who secretly snuck into the ship. It's time to call an emergency meeting and kick the wrong guy out of the spaceship. <laughs> Nor 9's premise isn't one of the easy ones to understand, and the story doesn't do a good job clarifying it because we've got these character stories mixing in with others to make things even more confusing. But the art and the soundtrack of this anime is something else. This was adapted from a visual novel, so I think that explains why the story is too hard to understand, but if you try not to think too hard and instead focus on the characters, you have some great character drama waiting for you. Number 2, Sugar Apple Fairy Tale. <laughs> this happens in a world where sweets are given an important position. There is even a title called Silver Sugar Master. There is even a competition called the Sugar Sculpture Festival, which, as you guessed, is about creating a sculpture from sugar. Our main character is Anne, who decides to participate in the festival and decides to hire a fairy named Shao. Number one, Sugar Apple Fairy Tale. 
Yeah, this is about slavery, but this time it's about a cute girl hiring a depressed slave and then getting torn on whether to release that slave or to use him to reach the sugar festival. Just like Familiar of Zero, this seems to play the master-servant trope really well, and unlike a lot of other anime that uses slavery as a trope, this one treats it seriously, so don't expect some redo of healer level writing here. Number 1, Spice and Wolf. <laughs> Even if you don't watch this anime, Hollow's voice will be enough to make your depressed day feel better. Spice and Wolf knows how to blend in the story between a deity and a merchant into this medieval looking fantasy setting. You can learn about trade, you can learn about their cultures, and most of all, the anime doesn't solely rely on romance and focuses on a lot of other aspects, like economics, trade markets, foreign currency exchange, and a couple of other stuff every economist would love. <laughs> Another fun fact about this anime is how the voice actors of the main duo are the same voice actors from Code Geass's Louch and Callan. The wolf girl's personality is also pretty unique compared to what we get these days, so watch this anime if you want to see how the wolf girl's the best girl. Once you finish watching the two seasons, make sure to give the light novel a try as well.